and welcome back to Community Cooking with Cardinals High School Cafe. Um, today we're really, really excited. We have with us Mary Ellen Gucciardi from the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. And one of the things that Mary Ellen, you're responsible for, I know we're going to talk about uh, soon enough, is, is really being able to embrace Indigenous culture in sort of a way that um, can sort of manifest into the education system. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I didn't say that right. Do you want to maybe <laughs> help me out here? Uh, I know we're focusing on sustainability, so that's why I really thought we would really, starting with Indigenous culture is a, is a really good place to start. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so within Indigenous um, history and just ideology, Indigenous people are essentially connected to the land. So absolutely sustainability. They were here thousands of years in harmony with the land, um, took only what they needed, um, lived in co in collaboration with the animals, so to speak, used all parts of animals um, to, to survive, really. So yes, absolutely, Indigenous people understand sustainability and have understood it for many, many, many hundreds of years. So um, my role as an educator in Dufferin Peel currently is um, as a consultant for First Nations, Métis, Inuit education across the system. It's a K-12 role, so it's very exciting to be able to infuse um, Indigenous practices or teachings through some of our practitioners and our partners um, for students and educators in the system. Wow. And so um, do you work with certain schools or certain projects or how, how is it that you sort of uh, go about doing that? So it's kind of, it changes depending on the project. In some instances, we have professional development opportunities that would be open to all elementary teachers or all secondary teachers and they can self-select. Okay. Um, in other instances, we have targeted groups. For example, I'm working on a project currently with the primary division um, teacher, so K-3. to and we will target specific um, schools within specific families of schools to work with a team within, the, within each individual elementary school. I prefer to work with more than one teacher in a school so that way they can kind of lean on each other, grow, mm -hmm. you know, and go through the learning together. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, professional development, uh, uh, like what would that look like? That's a good question. It's a huge part of my role um, because in the area of Indigenous edu education, there are many parts we don't know that we were not taught. Mm -hmm. So we are looking to change that. As a result of the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission and the 94 Calls to Action, it's our, it's our job, it's our mandate to really implement these calls to action to uh, have a better education system for young people today. And teachers really want to do right by this, but they feel they're not equipped. So what does PD look like or professional development? It can look like going out on the land for three days and immersing in a traditional Anishinaabe um, camp, so to speak, for teachers. It can be having a practitioner come to us and do some workshop-based workshop learning and then have some feedback for resources. It can be having speakers. It can be visiting um, a local uh, Indigenous uh, partner within our community. It could be the Peel Aboriginal Network. It could be the uh, Woodlands Cult Cultural Center. Lots of different opportunities where we can engage in the learning. So they really, it could even be a writing project. We recently uh, connected and wrote a, a resource for a novel called Indian Horse, Richard Wakami's novel Indian Horse, which we're really proud of because we hope that it will be infused within English classes across the system. Wow, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so teachers from Dufferin Peel got Bro. together yes. to write for this? Yeah. We've uh, reached out to Richard himself actually to hopefully edit the piece. We've looked uh, with other First Nations practitioners as well to have it edited and just to ensure that we're on the right path, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But there are so many teachers interested in doing the right thing and doing this well. So we have a great commitment from our school board to continue this learning, absolutely. Yeah, it's so amazing that you should mention that because you know, the education that we have is largely Eurocentric and, and you know, it's a Eurocentric model and so being able for, as an educator, to say how is it that I sort of shift this framework mm -hmm. without staying in the model where it's I'm the teacher and you're the student and this is the knowledge that we're bringing, but mm -hmm. what knowledge do we know and what knowledge can we sort of discover together and I think absolutely. That, yeah, absolutely, that's amazing. So in this area of learning, we're really on the journey together for the vast majority of teachers. Mm -hmm. They're on the journey with their students, which is okay. As long as we're all on the journey, it's okay. Yeah. And we will always work with Indigenous pr uh, partners and practitioners and elders within community to bring them alongside the journey and to have them in our classrooms and to advise us. Absolutely. The in that is critical to, uh, to this learning. So I know it's, it's, it's early in the process. It's been a few years, but yes. have you had any feedback as yet in terms of even if it's as much as what you've witnessed, you know, a student response or educator response or, or, or community member response to the so projects? we've had, I, I would say, I guess so in terms of feedback, 
Um, and at the secondary level, we offer indigenous courses in the system, uh, either native lit or um, just different cultural uh, historical courses. Um, and they have grown exponentially, even um, an art course, art-based course. So they have grown immensely. We are now, um, half of our secondary schools offer these courses, and we have almost tripled in the number of credits being delivered. So that, to me, tells me that the system is definitely interested and wanting more. Um, I have numerous, numerous emails and requests from educators wanting more resources and more professional development, even at the elementary level, just so that they can uh, teach this area of history accurately and honorably, mm. really. It, it is, um, I, I, I joke and I often say that we are on the wave of something, a 10-year wave of change in education. And there was an, an educator that coined it as Canada's civil rights movement, and I do kind of see it as that. We, yes. we have never taught this history accurately in this country, so we are really in a time of beautiful change in Canada, and um, I think Dufferin Peel is really honoring that change and doing it uh, in an authentic way with Indigenous partners alongside. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like the way you said that, and I even heard Brian Finnamore on one of our reflections last week. Just yeah. Oh, he's a great champion. Yeah. Absolutely. He's one of, yes. Weaving into, you know, mm -hmm. this is a dark part of Canadian history, That's right. but one that can't be left undiscovered and untold. Like we really, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that's fabulous. It's not about shame and blame. It's about uh, understanding and doing things right and moving forward. Young people get that really quickly. As mm -hmm. young as five years old, they understand it when they're told. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really not about uh, staying in a bad place. It's about moving towards a better place together. Yes, and I yeah. love the way you put that 10-year sort of mark because you can see in I education so. yes. that, you know, I've been teaching just for, mm -hmm. you know, about 10 years. And you see when a shift takes place, it does take about yes. that much time. Yes. And yeah. then things Absolutely. start to become almost systematic, right? Yeah, and that's what we're hoping for. And we're at the beginning. I mean, it's been a few years now, but we're really at the beginning. For example, our school board has now um, officially acknowledged the, the sacred land that we stand on. Uh, Mississaugas of the New Credit are stewards of the land, and we have gone through proper protocol to acknowledge that, and it will be said at, before board meetings. That's, it may not seem like a big step, but it's a huge step, and it's a wonderful step in honoring this land. So I'm very excited that we were able to take that and have it you know, approved and now become part of our system. You know what? I think I think it is a really big step. Mm -hmm. I, I've partnered with Ecosource and many episodes have been partnered with Ecosource. Yeah. We had the privilege of going to Iceland Community Garden and mm. even Iceland Community Garden there uh, as our community partners, they brought up that here we are on Mr. Right. Sagas of the New Credit Land and we're, we, you know, the, the event that we uh, talked about we'll see in future episodes, but you know, it's talking all about sustainability and so Absolutely. we really do have Indigenous culture to thank for oh. being able to show us what mm -hmm. true sustainability looks like. Absolutely. What the heart of sustainability comes from and that sort of mutual respect for everything that's around you. Well, it's understanding that everything is connected. Mm -hmm. So people and the plant life are all connected. People and the animals are all connected. And respecting and understanding what that path should look like is really what we're hoping to teach young people mm -hmm. um, in this next generation. You know, it just strikes me as uh, we're just about to round down and move off to our mm -hmm. um, inviting our local guest with us. but. You know, it's it seems so simple when you say it, but at the same <laughs> it time, is, it's it is so simple. All when these we, years of education yes. for us to get at this table and have this conversation. Absolutely. Right? Well, when we know better, we do better. So that's where we're at right now. We're trying mm -hmm. to do better. I know, absolutely. All right. So before we Thank have you. our next guest with us, I'm going to uh, do what's our mirepoix <laughs> oh, yeah, minute. Right. So okay. I'm going to just fire off a series of questions sure. to you, and uh, hopefully you can just let me know. Um, just give us a little bit of backdrop about you. So um, first, I'm going to ask you your favorite pantry item. Um, I'd say pasta. Pasta. It's a sure fire. A true Italian. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's absolutely. A absolutely. <laughs> uh, favorite restaurant. I absolutely love a place in the junction called Honest Weight. Okay. It's wonderful. I He's a fishmonger as well, but oh, it's, wow. it's so great. Yeah. Love the junction. I'll have to check that mm -hmm. out. Uh, favorite grocery store? I would. I don't know about favorite, but the one I rely on, tried and true, is Metro because it's around the corner from where I live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love Metro, to be honest. They, yeah. They've got great stuff. Uh, favorite splurge item? Um, this one, okay, favorite splurge. I would say probably something like shellfish, like lobster or crab. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Absolutely. <laughs> And finally, if you could only pick one type of food and that's what you had to have for the rest of your life, what would that be? French fries, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a potato. That's a first, but yes, absolutely, French fries will work. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You're sticking around a little bit. Yes. We're going to be joined right now by our uh, Dufferin Peel Catholic partner. Thank you. See you in a bit. 
Hi, and welcome back to Community Cooking with Cardinals High School Cafe. Uh, we had with us Mary Ellen Gucciardi before the break, and now we are so pleased to welcome Eddie Robinson, who um, I was just discovering is a keynote speaker for Indigenous education within the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. You are a parent of students in the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, and you are also a knowledge keeper. Um, so one of the things that I, I, I hadn't even heard the term knowledge keeper before. So welcome, and thank you for being here. And can you let us know a little bit about what that role is and, and entails? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, it's glad to, I'm happy to be here. Uh, knowledge keeper is uh, is considered, I guess, a, a cultural title amongst uh, Indigenous people, and I'm from the Anishinaabe Nation or the Ojibwe Nation. And for for that role, it, it really um, calls on me to understand our indigenous ways of knowing our cultural customs and our ceremonial practices and to be able to uh, maintain those as well as pass them on. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, it seems so valuable as well. Um, so with the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School, School Board, you have a, a, a partnership, I understand. And, and so when you talk about keynote speaking, like what kind of events? Well, actually, I'm traveling across Canada um, speaking to several different different uh, district school boards and universities and corporations and, and nonprofits. But right now, my focus has been uh, within uh, Dufferin Peel Catholic. Uh, and and th this relationship uh, with um, the Catholic Board has been developing over the past, uh, I don't know, three to four mm -hmm. years. Wow. So it hasn't just been a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we just decided all of a sudden to do this because of uh, the current things that are on the, the forefront. No, this has been a developing relationship. and. We've constantly, uh, you know, tried to be forging, f you know, forward in terms of uh, really increasing the collective consciousness of um, the Indigenous narrative in Canada. Okay, uh, that's and so when you say keynote speaker, is your target audience educators or students? It can be anywhere from JK to twelve, uh, okay. as well as uh, professional learners. Oh wow, okay, and so um, some of the things I guess that you would focus on during any of your keynotes um, like do, do you have something that does it always change or is there a, like a message or a, a way that, that you um, a message that you get out for every keynote or yeah well I mean each keynote is different mm -hmm. um, so this current one I have coming up is around um, technology and how we as indigenous people can engage our culture through technology and digital space and so in the past, it might have been uh, a journey through education uh, in terms of my own personal narrative, because I didn't go the, the very um, conventional way. I kind of took the long route. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was more like hands-on learning and uh, learning within the organizations and uh, being mentored by several leaders in, in the community and uh, eventually you know, resulting in my master's in education. So you know, was it a standard kind of like path? I, and, and that's what I talk about in, in that specific keynote, especially mm -hmm. to educators. Mm -hmm. And I think technology, I mean, it's, it's such a, a, a tool, um, but that's really what it is, is just a tool. So the message has to be the message and learning how to use that tool in a way that is able to engage because we already know that students are engaged in technology in mm -hmm. terms of just, I mean, when, you know, social media and, you know, they're, they're, it's a very big part of their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And so being able to harness that in a way that I guess, you know, would, would make sure that you're sort of incorporating it into the messages that you want to sort of get out there or, or, you know, a positive way, I guess, which is it's a big focus now in school. Right. I mean, and also with, in terms of indigenous ways of knowing or which is now the word for culture because it's more inclusive of everything. Um, Technology, in terms of a practice, has really uh, helped us move forward in so many ways. Before, you know, we couldn't access certain elders. Now we can do that through Skype, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we couldn't access uh, certain language programs. And now we can find the word of the day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it really kind of moves us forward in terms of as a, as a community and really having um, a greater access to, to our culture and our ways of knowing. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. So. In terms of the relationship that we have with Duffer and Peel, what type of projects have you been working on together to, um, or are you going to work no, we on? We are, and interestingly, today is so fitting because we are beginning, um, we're, we're calling it a primary division, so that's kindergarten to grade, grade three educators. It's an inquiry project, so to speak. It's a First Nations inquiry project, and Eddie is our facilitator. Um, and myself and one of my colleagues, Joanna Newton, we are working with Eddie um, in collaboration to 
uh, maybe look at the pedagogy, pedolo, pedago, pedagogy, pedagogy for educators and how best to go about that within a First Nations lens. And Eddie will bring his life story, his knowledge, um, and the idea will be that this is a three-part teaching. Um, one day tomorrow is our first day with the educators. Um, three per school have been identified. And then we um, move to the second day where Eddie actually gets into the schools with the students. So we're really excited to see what, what, it, what evolves from that type of experience. And then we come back together as a collective, the, all the educators and, and the team, um, to kind of see how the, the learning happened or what, what came of it or what uh, we can improve upon or how those educators feel now after a three-part series. Uh, do they feel better equipped? Do they feel safer going into a classroom and maybe uh, addressing some of these topics that in, in the past may not have been something that they were most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to help them to be more comfortable, um, to work along, you know, really what we should be doing, uh, but ultimately it's to bring the knowledge to the students. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our ultimate goal. Yeah, and I think the mm -hmm. idea of the collaborative inquiry, um, you know, it speaks to the way that you had said that you got your education, mm -hmm. collaboratively with learning from, but with the people that you're working with. So, you know, I find that the, a lot of learning takes place when you sort of pose a question together and say, how are we going to, how are we going to come to the solution? Or um, do you have like a full based inquiry, like one sort of underlying sentiment that will be in the inquiry? We're going to find out tomorrow when okay. we meet the teachers. But I will tell you, in my experience in doing this work, um, I never really have a difficult time getting people to come. I usually have to turn people away. Mm. That's how much interest there is within the system of uh, educators that we work with. They really want to understand better indigenous ways of knowing, um, and they will come out. They come out even after school for different events to, mm -hmm. do, to engage in this learning. So yeah. yeah, there's a real need and a real desire for this. And is, would you say even collaboration like is an indigenous way of knowing in terms mm. of yeah. Like some of the practices <clears throat> in terms of Indigenous education? Well, uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you start looking at the practice in terms of how we thrived as communities, even before contact and after mm -hmm. contact, it, it was all about sharing the land and the resources and how can we do that collectively together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as much as we are very distinct and unique in terms of our own languages and, and customs, we're very much a part, about, very much a, a part of building relationships. Wow. And if I can add, uh, when I, people often ask me, you know, what does your work entail? And I often reply, some of the real focus of my work is to build relationships of trust that take time. And as Eddie alluded to earlier, this is an ongoing relationship that has been, you know, three years in the making, so to speak. So it really, um, it requires us to kind of spend our time and engage in community and meet people and understand them and their story. Uh, and then, you know, work together within our system. Mm -hmm. yeah, because they're very different worlds in some, some respects. So it will, Absolutely. it will require some time. And I think it's really nice that we're going to sort of end with that note of trust being the uh, mm -hmm. sort of main key component. As just, you know, even just as an educator, I know that Absolutely. if students don't trust that's you, right. then you, they won't learn from you. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's absolutely. sort of absolutely integral in, in doing this. And I know trust is such a big thing with just the history of the relations between uh, Indigenous Canadians and the government. So yes. it's, it's really, um, it is sort of an, a positive thing to hear that that would be one of the main things that we're really focusing on looking at. Um, okay, so <laughs> we are going to shift gears a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to head into the kitchen, or you two are going to head into the kitchen <laughs> and, and be our, our local Exciting. community judges yeah. for a mm -hmm. cook-off. Um, but before I do that, Eddie, is it okay if I include you in the Mirepoix moment and we're just sure. sort of trying to get to know a little, uh, just for a little bit of fun, um, we're going to do a quick Q&A. And uh, first we're going to start with, what is your favorite pantry item? Cereal. Okay. So, just like my daughter. Is it, is it Cheerios? Uh, um, um, more granola kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, favorite restaurant? Um, oh, um, sorry. Uh, Astoria on the oh, Danforth. Oh, nice. My, yes, Beautiful. by far. Okay. Um, favorite grocery store? Uh, the, the Superstore. Great Canadian Superstore. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Canadian. I love the Superstore. Um, and favorite splurge item? Luca Mathers. Okay, you got to elaborate. I swear I was Greek in a past life. Okay. <laughs> what is that? Um, little kind of donut holes or honey balls. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, Luca Mades, it's actually my son's name, and that's his nickname, so. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh, that's the best. Um, okay, and finally, if you had one 
item that you could, one food type that you could have for the rest of your life, and that's all you could get, what would it be? Uh, rainbow trout. Oh, ah. nice. I love rainbow trout. Nice. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice to get to know you a little bit. Um, so stick around. We'll be right back. We're going to head into the I'm making saute kale which, um, with bacon and a pan seared baked chicken with rice. Sounds delicious. I can't wait to taste it. Thank you. I am making potatoes with eggs. Nice. So, have you much experience with these recipes or is this the first time out? First time. Oh, I made this Oh, you already got me beat. I can't even fry an egg, so. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. So what will gravy in there? I'm going to eleven. Eleven? Yeah. So what sparked you to take I'm culinary course or hospitality? What what's the interest here? Just for fun or is this something you hope to do later in life? I've been cooking since I was six years old and cool. I actually want to be a chef when I'm older. Oh, that's awesome. I've been cooking since I was about ten and I also want to do a culinary career when I get older. For school? I was thinking about going to Humber College. Nice, Humber College. Great. Um, I'm going to drive it down. They have a great culinary program there, too. So is there any part of your um, your heritage or culture that kind of influences your dishes? Not really. No? Anything you learned from your parents, your grandparents? Not here today. No. So what would be at home that would be that you know how to cook that's really something from you know your your background or what you grew up on, so to speak? Oh fried chicken. Fried chicken? Like some rice and peas and that sounds good too. Yeah. We'll come we'll come back for another taste test. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. So what are some of the names you got running around in your head for your your new restaurant? Uh I'm just gonna name it after my mom. Oh. Her name is Tina. I'm like trying to mix it with my name, but it's like two T's, so I'm just trying to figure out like... Fair. She really is thinking about it. Yeah, this is yeah. going to happen. Yeah. I'm trying to own it like by some 25 or something. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I want to travel around the world and learn like different cooking styles, and then I might either join a restaurant or make my own business. So who is, who is your favorite chef right now? Chef Boyardee. Chef Boyardee. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. My favorite chef would have to be Chef Ramsey. Oh, Ramsey. Chef Ramsey. Doesn't he scare you a little bit? But I, he pushes me to go. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, Ellen. My favorite chef right now? I like Chef Lynn Crawford. She makes me laugh too, but her food is amazing. <laughs> Mine is by far Anthony Bourdain. Oh, I was just going to ask if you know Anthony Bourdain when she said she wants to travel the world. Yeah. Because that's what he does. He has a TV show, Travel the World. Do you and watch the show? Food. You got yeah. yeah. Yeah? Of course. Yeah. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing because the one the amazing things that he does on the show is yeah. he really engages people in their culture, yep. and their background, and their ancestry, and what influences their dishes, all those kinds of things. So how are you guys doing? A little bit nervous. Yeah, I kind of left my spatula. <laughs> so what are you adding there? Tell me what those spices that you've added. I see salt and pepper, but what else is there? Uh, I have thyme and rosemary. Nice. And a little bit of... Way in your way? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Ready for plating. Oh, fancy. I have to so, my rice. What are interesting things you guys like doing besides cooking? I like playing basketball. Basketball, mm. nice. Um, I do poetry. Oh, oh cool. Oh, poet. Can, can you recite one of your latest pieces while you're cooking? Ah, <laughs> Put you cooking? on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I couldn't do that. <laughs> no, no? Okay. So who's your uh, favorite uh, recording artist? Um, I'd be like Drake or like Andy Gomar. Drake? Is that Drake? Did she say Drake? Still. Yeah. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar's people. Yeah. I like him. Tia? My favorite singer? Yeah. Um, I don't really have a favorite singer. I listen to like different different genres of music. So I don't really have a favorite person mm -hmm. I listen to. Who are you listening to right now? Who's on your, your iPod or your phone? Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. Ah. Wow, the colors look beautiful in that tail. Oh, yeah. 
interestingly enough, I just recorded at uh, Studio in Toronto that Drake recorded at and Nicki Minaj. So maybe you can be the chef, you know, <laughs> you know just oh. hook the girl up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys sing as well? No. No. No? Do you sing while you cook? <laughs> you listen to music while you cook? Nah. Or is this music right now? This is like. This is music. <laughs> so, you know, we are hoping uh, in Duffin Field to have a student conference, an Indigenous student conference this year. If you need it, uh, we can engage maybe you and your school and your culinary program to make some indi some local food that's uh, Indigenous to this area. That'd what do you nice. think? That'd Might be a fun idea? Yeah, it will. We'll talk to your teacher. <laughs> so if you could make a dish for your favorite chef, what would it be? Probably, um, not as if you like rice and peas, but sauté shrimp on mm. the side of fried chicken. Deep fried chicken with a little bit of spice to it. Sounds good. I would make, I'm not sure. I think I would make their chicken with like rice and peas. So those are your like signature dishes, right? Yeah. yeah. So can I come to Cardinal Cafe and have some fried chicken with rice and peas any day of the week? If our teacher allows us to make it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to her and see what we can get done. <laughs> so do you have any messages for new and upcoming chefs? No? Any kind uh, of mo really motivational nice words? Yeah. I would say to work hard and chase your dreams, not to give up. Not to give up. Awesome. Tia? Um, it's a lot of work. You just got to keep your head on straight and just focus on what you want. Never give up. Nice advice. I like it. So is this the culminating moment here? <laughs> I think we have to taste, Eddie. I think it's time. Uh, they both look so good. The pressure. <laughs> the pressure. I think I'm going to close my eyes and taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shall we take a taste? They're all off. There, right, I'm in it. You go first. All right. Here's a fork for you. Lovely. The eggs are so nice and fly, like fluffy. They're not heavy, delicious. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna grab a piece here. Piece of chicken. Oh, this kale is definitely gonna get a piece. Can't miss the bacon. Oh, absolutely great. Lovely, they're both beautiful. You wanna taste? Sure. Here, I'll give you my knife, but in a different fork. All right. Some really interesting uh, flavors. I trust that you don't have cooties. So. No, I gave you a new fork. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I have to tell you, breakfast is my favorite <laughs> meal of the day. I could eat breakfast all the time. Not to kind of put any pressure on you. I'm sure this is great too. <laughs> See, this is where I need table manners and I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the bacon is, uh... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, we have to pick one. I hate this part. They're both so yummy and delicious. It is so... I mean, they're completely different. This is, you know, a light breakfast kind of meal, and this is a full entree for dinner, even. So it's kind of, kind of hard, different categories. Flavors are delicious in both. Consistency, everything is presentation. For me, because I absolutely love bacon <laughs> and any kind of bacon, and you just really married it so beautifully with that kale. I'd have to go here. Do we? Do, so, so we have a tie. We have a tie. We have a tie. <laughs> you know, honest, honest to goodness tie. Like no, honest. honestly, I, I would eat any of these dishes any day of the week. But you got me on the kale and bacon. So Good thank job. I might, I might make Thanks. that at home. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so much. Yay. I'm missing the high five. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome, girls. Great work.